What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? It has happened after 16, I don't know, 16 years of grinding, making the playoffs, getting injured in the playoffs, choking some 3-1 leads. Chris Paul is finally in the NBA Finals. The Phoenix Suns are in the NBA Finals for the first time since I, I think they said 93 when Charles Barkley and, 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 and MJ were going at it. That's a long drought. Before the season, they were on a 10 game, 10 season drought of missing the playoffs. And in just one sole year, they are in the finals, which is a W. We're going to talk about that in a second. But before we go any further, I want to give my roses to the LA Clippers. The fact that they were in this series, took it to six, is a blessing. It's, it's a success, if you ask me. Of course, this team was built to take over LA. We the new kings of LA. That's a fact, right? But due to them circumstances... I can say that this season for the Clippers was a success. I was in the building when Kawhi Leonard got injured. I was there. And the sentiment, of not just around the league, but amongst NBA fans and everything, is, oh, they're about to get eliminated. They're going against the one seed. Donovan Mitchell was hooping, even though he got some little bit of injuries. Mike Conley is coming back. And this team took two games away from the number one seed to advance to the next round. That is a W. And then they go into the conference finals against the only healthy team left. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Against the only healthy team left. And they take two games. It made it a little bit scary. You know, the Phoenix Suns are up 3-1. And then they come out and they, they win a game, game five. You know, so I, I would say this season is success. What happens in free agency with Kawhi Leonard? I would hope for, for the league's sake or for the Clippers' sake that Kawhi Leonard does the unfinished business thing and he just resigns. Because I honestly do believe that this year's version of the Clippers is significantly better and was more built for a championship run than last year's. It's just unfortunate that Kawhi Leonard got injured, Zubats got injured, and Serge Ibaka, who they signed, was supposed to be a big part of things that people are forgetting, was, was also injured, right? Let's talk about this health thing. Um, because I've been seeing a lot of people saying that the Phoenix Suns had the easiest path to the championship. And guess what? You're absolutely right. I'm not going to dispute that. But at the end of the day, I think it was, oh, somebody find this clip. Somebody find this clip and tweeted at me. After the Steph Curry and the Warriors won a championship, there was a clip of him in a post-game interview where he said, sarcastically, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that everybody else got injured. I'm sorry that we beat the team in front of us. I'm sorry that we got lucky and we stayed healthy throughout the season. At the end of the day, the Phoenix Suns could only do one thing, and that's play against the team in front of them. And that's what they did. That's exactly what they did. So, was the path easy? Yeah, sure. But they did it. And now they're about to go into the finals <laughs> where the Eastern Conference teams, both of the stars are down as I'm recording this video. I don't know what's going to happen with Giannis's knee. I don't know what's going to happen with Trey Young's ankle or bone, uh, bone bruise. But the, the Suns are the healthiest team left. They missed Cam Johnson today, sure. But they're the healthiest team left. And that, that might be the determining factor of who ends up being NBA champions this season. Let's talk about this health thing. Because we've seen nothing but injuries, injuries, injuries. And there's a lot of things that play into this, right? Short and off season, 100% did something to the bodies. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, right? The fact that we had not just one or two, like every season I feel like we have one or two, maybe three players go out with an injury. Unfortunate, it's just how it is. But the fact that we can put together an all-star roster of players that miss playoff games is something that Adam Silver needs to be dealing with this offseason. And like, I know they said they want to start the next season on the normal path again, but does that make it a short and off season? I don't really know. It's cool to see parody. Nobody wants to see injury. You know what I'm saying? So short and off season, they had the second half of the season where they were trying to fit so many games into a short amount of time. And at the end of the day, we have to remember that these are still humans playing a highly physical game at the highest level. And they're humans. They have bodies that, that can break down. And we saw a lot of teams and a lot of players break down. I love the idea of parity, but I don't want to get parity and have to sacrifice great talent in the league, right? I've been having a ton of fun in this playoff run, 100%. I've, I've not missed a single game. I've, there, there have been games I've turned off <laughs> when it's a 20-point, 30-point game, for sure, but I haven't missed a single game. But I can say that I would I would have enjoyed to see more Kyrie Irving. I would enjoy to see more Kawhi Leonard. I would enjoy to see James Harden, even though that team was a super team. I just want to see good basketball at the end of the day, and I think we might have been robbed of that to some extent with all of these injuries, right? 
But at the end of the day, only thing that matters right now is the Phoenix Suns are in the NBA Finals. Devin Booker two seasons ago, actually at the beginning of last season, was looked at as a guy to be putting up empty stats. And right now he's an all-star player on a team that is in the finals. That's incredible. That's an incredible arc. Last year, everybody talked about how DeAndre Aiden was a mistake at the number one pick because he had he got suspended for 25 games. And now he's the guy from that draft class that's in the finals first. You know? There's a lot of different narrative things that have completely died. And like the, that that's a good thing. That's a really, really good thing. But let's talk about this game. Because what I love to see is, is not only is Chris Paul is in the finals right now, but it's the way we get to that point, right? Suns are up by, I think at one point, 17. And then we had a little streak. We had a little run. Paul George started hitting some shot. Mook was incredible today. And just like that, a 17-point lead went to a 7. And that's when overdrive happened for Chris Paul. I don't know how much this has happened throughout the playoffs specifically, but we've seen these moments from Chris Paul all regular season long, but I'm happy it happened at the highest stage where he just took over, completely took over a game. He could not miss. Paul George, first of all, Paul George had Chris Paul on skates four times this series. Patrick Beverly even gave Chris Paul a little yank yank in that first half, but he kept getting up. Paul George crossed Chris Paul over, hit a shot, and then on the very next play, Chris Paul came down and hit an one three. You know what I'm saying? Resilient. But we got to talk about the fact that this man is an actor. I love Chris Paul. Y'all know this. He's my favorite player of all time outside of Derrick Rose. I've said that a million times. You know this if you're a fan of the channel. He's an actor. The boogie thing, the flopping, that's the only part about Chris Paul's game that I hate is the flop. And I say that about Marcus Smart. I say that about any Manu Ginobili and his prime. Like, anybody that's a known flopper and gets away with those type of things, I just, I just hate that part of the game. Right? I hate it. And that was kind of a boiling point for the Clippers, right? Because then you get Patrick Beverly doing some, just being ridiculous. Listen, I made a tweet five days ago saying it's hard for me to dislike Patrick Beverly. And here's the context of that. Patrick Beverly is a nuisance on defense. He can have an incredible, incredible impact on winning basketball when he is locked in and not just running around. He is also from my city. He grew up in, in K-Town, which is 10 minutes away from where I grew up. So, like, I try to root for the hometown heroes, the people that made it, especially if you think about the journey, had to play overseas for four seasons to finally make it into the league. But for him to do the things that he did right here, pushing Chris Paul in the back, cheap shot thing, unacceptable, man. Did you lose a fan today in me? Maybe. I say maybe. I, I might forget if they even pushed Chris Paul. But, like, man, that's, that's, why I rooted for, that's why I rooted for Patrick Beverly. He's from where I'm from. I know the struggles that he went through and vice versa. And this man come out here making me look like a fool. Making me take that tweet back down. Oh, I didn't take the tweet down because I don't delete tweets. But you get what I'm saying. Again, Clippers, congratulations on the season. But the Suns are headed to the playoffs. And the good thing about this is they got at least, what, at the minimum, they have six days of rest at this point. It's a 2-2 series over there. I don't I don't know if Milwaukee's going to win two in a row or Atlanta's going to win two in a row. So this might end up being a, you know, a little seven-game series between them. And that just means more rest. Um, Chris Paul looked amazing today, but I don't know. Maybe he still got some injury with that shoulder. Um, and the Devin Booker's nose situation, I, I mean, he's a broken nose. It just takes time to heal, but that'll feel a little bit better. We got to mention Jay Crowder. I don't know how I'm eight minutes into this or however long, and I haven't mentioned Jay Crowder. Um, my boy Pierre said it best. If Jay Crowder has a game where he's hitting the shots, GG's, it's, the game is over, right? He, he's one of those players that, like, you don't expect to do anything crazy, but when he does do something crazy, you'll take that in your run with, run with it. Five threes in a series where he had struggled to shoot the ball. Um, Mikael Bridges only attempted one three, but, hey, he was there. He got four, six, nine points. Cameron Payne almost sold part of this game. Um, just a couple back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays where he, like, turned the ball over, took a bad shot, and then Chris, that's when Chris Paul came in and started to hit the overdrive. I'm just so excited, man. Right, so but but it's hard for me to look at this and think about next season because I, I can see some general managers around the league seeing what the Phoenix Suns did this year and be like, we can be the next year's Phoenix Suns. For example, if I'm looking at teams out here, the this <laughs> the Bulls could try to convince themselves that they might be next year's Phoenix Suns. Hey, we got a young team with a young guy that can get buckets. We just need some stability, and they might go out there and try to spend on stability when in reality. In reality, it's not the same. <laughs> it's really not the same. Um, but some teams, I think some teams can look at that and be excited and be like, hey, this the, you, the Pelicans can be looking at the same thing. We got two star players, two all-star caliber players. We just need some type of stability. We need a coach, first of all. They got to figure out a coach. 
and they need like a, a good, good vet. The problem is you don't get many Chris Pauls as a good, good vet in free agency or in the trade market. You know what I'm saying? So you can try to convince yourself that you, y'all the next sons, but in reality, you probably aren't. You probably aren't. Um, there's a lot of luck that goes into having a championship run. And the Suns have had a lot of luck. And that's okay. Because they're still there. They're in the finals. When there's 14 other teams in that conference that wish they were in their spot, wish they had the same amount of luck, but they didn't get that luck. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for game one. Whoever it may be, bring them on. The Suns are in the finals. Wow. Imagine going back two seasons and telling yourself, the Suns will be in the NBA Finals in 2021. What do you think you would say to your time-traveling self? Would you believe them? Because I wouldn't. Even last year after the 8-0 run in the bubble, I wouldn't have believed that they were about to be in the Finals. Go back and watch my video when they traded for Chris Paul. I was happy for CP. I was excited. But I think I even said in that video, he's going to go another year without competing for a championship. Wrong take. Believe it or not, a guy that talks about basketball every day, every day um, was wrong about something. People always tweet at me stuff when I'm wrong. I'm like, bro, it ha like I'm, I'm not a perfect, I'm not perfect here. Um, but hey, it happened, and um, they got a couple days of rest. Now we just focus on Atlanta versus Milwaukee, and we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Um, people take things way too seriously on Twitter. You know, I understand passion, especially for passion for basketball. Listen. This is what I do for a living. You know what I'm saying? Passionate about basketball is I, I'm, I'm that. But some people be passionate about the wrong things related to basketball. Right? People were legitimately mad at me because the Suns are in the finals and I'm celebrating. Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse finals run. It's always going to be funny, but it, it's not relevant because we're not in Disney World anymore. We got we to gotta figure something else out, y'all. At the end of the day, you can put an asterisk next to the season if you want to. It will not matter. In 15 years and we talk about the 2021 season, nobody's put no asterisk next to it. The year the Spurs won a championship. I can't remember what season it was. In a lockout shortened season where there was hella injuries. Nobody's put an asterisk on that season because we're so far past that, that time frame that it doesn't matter. Only thing it says is that Tim Duncan got an extra championship. The San Antonio Spurs have one more championship. So you can add an asterisk to the season, but I promise you in 20 years when you're talking to your kids, are you going you going you really think you're going to look back on this season and be like, "Yeah, the Suns or the Bucks or the Hawks won a championship, but I put an asterisk next to it." I don't think that's the case. Enjoy basketball, y'all. Whether your team is in it, whether it's not, bro, just enjoy basketball because if you do not remember, during the height of the pandemic, we went six months without basketball. It was the darkest time ever, bro. <laughs> so, yes, like I said, I would have loved to have everybody healthy, but they aren't. And I think you can still enjoy some of the things even if they aren't. I'll see y'all soon.